So we're going to ask you some intervening questions again. Is death a bad thing or a good thing? It's a good thing. So you want to say, okay, I'll go along. It's a good thing. I'm just not ready yet. So let's get into this. Why would anyone not be ready to continue to have ongoing life? What is it that you've done in your way of approaching life that makes you want to hear us when we say you're eternal and want to hear us when we say that you will remain focused and you will still have a perspective and that you don't go anywhere and that there's no ending to who you are? You want to hear all of that, but what thoughts do you practice on a pretty regular basis that make that a struggle for you to know that? You guys got to get over this death thing. Because everybody you know is going to die, and you are too, even though there's no death. In other words, you're all going to have the experience. So when you practice not liking it, every time somebody looks like they're going to do it, or every time somebody's done it, you set yourself up for stuff that's going to bite you in the butt later. Mm -hmm. Esther was at a party the other night with her daughter and her daughter's friends. And they had a big room at the top of the AT&T Center, and they were watching the Spurs game way, way down there. Far, 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 far away. <laughs> and one of Esther's daughter's friends slipped in to the seat next to Esther and said, hello. Esther says, hello. Her friend says, I hear you have built a new house. Esther said, yes, I like it so much. I hear that you are in the neighborhood where Tracy lives. Yes, I like that so much. And then her friend said, that is such a good thing that you're right there where Tracy can help you. <laughs> and Esther says, I'm going to put Tracy in a home soon. <laughs> She's become quite a burden to me. <laughs> This girl didn't know what to think of Esther. <laughs> Esther said, oh, it's only about fun. It's not about anything else. But this lovely girl argued for her point of view. Oh, but I mean, you're not always going to feel like climbing up on the ladder. And Esther said, and? <laughs> she said, as she could see, Esther was revving up for <laughs> the... <laughs> She says, well, I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about later. And Esther said, you know, these conversations are what causes this general diminishment of people. So as you tell that story, that's setting up your future experience. But I'd appreciate it if you don't tell that story about me. And she said, okay. Yeah. And then she told Tracy. I think I made your mom mad. And Tracy said, did my friend make you mad? And Esther said, she didn't make me mad. She made me want to speak to the world at large. Tell the story that you want to tell about how you want your life to unfold. And when you buy in, just because you've been observing that's the way other people are living, you don't have to tell the story just because that's the way it is with so many people. Tell the story the way you want your story to be. The universe is responding to your vibration. And so if Esther had sat there and listened to the story, Esther was polite enough, but if Esther had sat there and had been in vibrational agreement with what this girl was saying, Esther had a choice right then. She could know what her inner being knows about all of this, or she could listen to the version that this woman was offering. Which one do you think Esther chose? <laughs> Esther's version. And could Esther have been more polite to the woman? Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. We're all going to get old and fall off ladders. <laughs> and I'm so glad I live on the street with Tracy because she'll have a key, and if I don't show up, she'll be able to get in and find me dead in the pantry. <laughs> I don't have any stairs, so I won't be falling down any stairs, but, you know, things happen. Things fall from the ceiling on people. I know what you mean. Age is a-coming. Gets right around the corner, in other words. You tell the worst stories 
to yourself about each other. And every time you do, you feel bad because your inner being isn't telling that story. And you just got to start practicing some other stories. And then realists will say, we're just telling it like it is. This woman's husband is a doctor. And he knows all the things that go wrong with old people. And so you just get to decide. You get to decide whether you want to see yourself through the eyes of source or whether you want to see yourself through the eyes of vulnerable others. It just comes down to that much. And just because you have someone that you care about in a situation where a lot of people are looking at her through the eyes of vulnerable others doesn't mean that it is your responsibility to do the same thing. And we are giving it everything we've got to convince you that you do not owe it to anybody to go that way just because that's the way almost everybody goes. They're not right about this. They're wrong about this. People diminish as they move through time because people tell those stories about diminishment. That's all. That's all. Do you know there are so many cultures where the older you are, the wiser you are? And you know why that is? Because the more you become connected with non-physical, the less you become attached to the things of the physical nature, the less you care about what other people think. There is so much freedom in moving through time and connecting with source energy who is ageless and timeless, you see. And so what's happening to you at your very early age in life, you're having an opportunity to pick how you want to feel about these things that are going to happen to everybody. And you get to tell the story the way you want it to be. And when you stop feeling guilty about telling a story the way that they don't want to hear it, then the law of attraction won't put you in a place where you have to tell that story. In other words, what Esther was mostly thinking as she was sitting there listening is, how did you get over here? Why are you sitting here next to me? What did I do to you? That's, yeah, is this, did I, did I create this? Or did she create this? You both are, but that's past tense. And now every day you get to make a new decision about how you want it to go. All of you have created the story the way you don't want it to be on one subject or another. But every moment's a new moment where you can revise the story. And in every moment, it's easy to revise the story to your advantage and to everyone else's advantage too. Because your inner being is always revising the story to your advantage. Even the death experience is the revision of the story to your advantage. When a doctor says, this could go on like this in this miserable way for six years. What the hell? I know. <laughs> Why would you say that to me? Do I not look sad enough? Do you need me to be sadder? No, I'm facing reality. No, you're not. You're creating reality. And you're dragging me in on a reality that I don't want to create. Now, we don't want you to get up in everybody's grill about things. <laughs> and it isn't a good idea to push hard against anybody about anything because you pick a fight, they're better at it. Fighters are really good at fighting. And if you take up the fight with somebody who's a really good fighter, you're going to lose because you're not a fighter, you're a lover. So don't get into a fight with anybody because people who fight usually are pretty good at it and you're not. <laughs> you're not. I know. I know. <laughs> and your inner being isn't good at fighting either. You know why? Because your inner being pushes against nothing. Your inner being goes with the flow. And you know what the flow is? The flow is you having lived life and you putting things in your vortex and you've established what your flow is and your inner being is all over that. So when you go with your flow, you're going to feel great. So if you feel like going to see your mother, go to see her. And if it feels good, then stick around for a little while. But when it doesn't feel good, don't stay. And don't talk to other people about it. And don't try to make it more than it is. And don't try to save the world. And don't try to save your mother. And don't try to be the hero of anything. Just go see your mother if you feel like going and seeing your mother. And don't you wish that we could all just stop talking about all of this? Don't you wish that you could just listen to what John Lennon says, which is all you need is love. Love is all you need. All you need, that's all there is. That's what your inner being feels about all of this. So when you see your mother, there's plenty to love. It's like Esther standing at the carousel, worrying about whether her bag was going to come off because it hadn't come off. And she thought, I can worry or I can have fun, but I can't do both. Make a decision that you're going to choose something that feels good and then 
practice it in all the times that you're not in a situation that's harder, which will make it easier to practice it when you are in a situation where it is harder. But most of all, if there is anything that we want you to hear, if there's anything that this segment is of value for you and for anybody else that could ever hear it, if the value that we have offered as we put this energy into the universe is this. Ready for it? You get to choose how you feel, no matter what. And if you think anything else, you're not free. And if you think anything else, you haven't been practicing. And if you think anything else, you are a hostage to society, especially your family. <laughs> and that is the basis of your resentment to humanity, to your family. In other words, I look at you and I don't feel good and I blame you. You need to live a different life so that when I look at you, you need to thrive because when I look at thrivers, I feel good. And when I look at people who aren't thriving, I don't feel good. So you owe it to me to thrive. Better set out a memo. <laughs> you got everybody's email? You got everybody's contact information? You got to tell everybody. Everybody on the planet, you need to tell them. All right, I'm walking through life and I'm not good at focusing. And I might stumble on you with my thoughts. And I'm not going to be ready if you're suffering. So don't be suffering when I stumble on you. Here's my picture. <laughs> when you see me coming, at least pretend you're doing good. Because I'm a very sensitive person. And I will suffer if I catch you not doing good. Or the other option is you can see whatever you're seeing through the eyes of source. And in doing so, you can understand. They might be in a step one moment, and that's good. They might be in concert with their inner being, and that's good. They might be reveling in the wholeness of who they are, and that's good. Everything that you have the potential of seeing is some phase of something that is good. You've just got to decide how you're going to look at it. Don't you want to be a person who brings out the best in everyone? You, you do. That's why you said, I want to soothe my mother. But you know what? You can't soothe your mother if you're not soothed. So if you haven't practiced being soothed, when you walk in, do you know the thing that hurts her the most is when she believes that she is the reason for the distress in the people she loves. So if you're not demonstrating any distress, you think she's going to say, that will. <laughs> she could at least be suffering a little bit. <laughs> she won't feel like that. She will revel in your sparkling eyes. She will revel in the love that you walk in the room with. She will revel in the inner being that you bring in there. She will revel when you walk in in concert with your non-physical team. Here we are to acknowledge the perfection of where you stand.